This conference will now be recorded. Let's wait for two more minutes, guys. Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing great and were able to attend yesterday's session too. Can you all confirm if you can hear my voice clearly? Okay. Yeah. So we spoke about the basics of A and ML yesterday, right? So for those who might have missed it yesterday, let me give a quick recap, okay? So we spoke about the basics of AI and ML and who can learn these technologies, why they are important, and we also saw the differences between data engineering, data analysis, and data science. So we also export some cool tools in generative AI, right? So if you missed yesterday's session, don't worry. I recommend you watch the recording when you get the chance. Okay, so now, now I now I have a quick. Uh, just a second, guys. Okay, now I have a quick question for you. How many of you are joining through a laptop today, and how many of you are joining on a mobile device? Put in the word mobile or yeah, laptop. In the chat. Okay, laptop. Great. Okay, Sachin is joining from both. Okay. So I see there are people joining in from mobile also. Okay. So I suggest using a laptop if possible because it will give you the best experience, especially since we'll be coding alongside each other. 
today's session will be hands on and interactive you are going to code right along with me so get ready to dive in if you already know python hang tight because we'll start with the basics and gradually move to more complex topics i promise it will be worth the wait so do remember data science is a field that touches every industry where there is data data science can help turn the data into insights and profitable actions so before we do the coding let's quickly recap the learning path we'll follow in this course let me share my screen so you can see the slide here right so we are going to uh, we covered the introduction to anml yesterday so we are going to learn programming with python and then we'll learn the numpy pandas and object oriented programming and in the fourth step we'll do learn the basics mathematics probability statistics and do exploratory data analysis and then we'll go for the machine learning concepts and in the end we'll see the introduction to deep learning and by the time we cover this topics like till like uh, till mathematics statistics you will be ready to apply for data analyst jobs and uh, if you have any questions you are always free to ask in the chat so we'll also create a whatsapp group for ongoing support and doubt clearing in the future if at any moment you feel lost or overwhelmed just reach out i'm here to make sure you understand everything clearly so now i need a promise from you if you are spending 1.5 hours in the sessions make sure you practice what you learn afterwards so consistency and practice is the key here so please dedicate 3 to 4 months to learn data science and i guarantee you'll see amazing results so think of this as an investment in your future okay so let's dive into this uh, today's topic which is introduction to programming so we'll start by discussing google collab and why python is such a great choice for data science so before we start does anyone know who in, who invented python so who invented python and when it was first released anybody who invented python no idea okay so i'll show you okay. i don't want to so is a dutch programmer he is the one who invented python he invented python like in 80s or late 90s but uh, uh, but it released in 1991 So, which language do you think was invented first, Python or Java? Which one? Okay, Java. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Okay, Java. Okay. Do you all think it's Java? Python is older actually it's released in 1991 while java came out in 1995 python rise to fame wasn't a sudden jump but rather a steady climb over time especially with the increased focus on data science and machine learning in the early 2010s so python is the older one not java Now let's talk about where we can do Python coding. What do you think? Where can we do the Python coding? Can we do it in the Word document or notebook? Jupyter. Okay, correct. So okay. I see Malia. Okay, Python ID is great. Well, that's correct. Okay. 
great there are many ideas like uh, like you all mentioning like spider pi charm ideally jupyter notebooks right but today we are going to use google collab did you heard about google collab before you can put it in the chat okay no issues like you are going to see what google collab is if it's a no okay okay i see a lot of news mm -hmm. so google collab is a product of google where we can directly do python programming so we need a ide right for doing the python programming we need a ide which is integrated development environment so the ides you people have mentioned many have mentioned are like jupyter spider pycharm we have to install softwares onto our system but google for uh, google collab is a product of google where we can directly do python programming without installing anything on your laptops it's connected to online servers so don't uh, show it to you and we can use it directly the only requirement to use google collab is the gmail account and an internet connection so be an online version of jupyter notebooks only i can see like many of you are already familiar with it's a fantastic tool because multiple people can collaborate on the same notebook you don't have to bother about your systems os and ram for installing softwares i'll share the link to our first class notebook you won't be having edit access but i'll show you how to make your own copy to work on so let me share my screen before that let me share the link i'll share a link in the chat you all can open it but i'll show you how to make a copy of it so this is the link i have shared this is a google collab platform so you can see here i didn't give you the access i guess let me give you the access so anyone with the link i given the viewer access if i would have given the editor access you can directly work on the same link also but i want you to make the copy of it because whatever codes you all be doing alongside will start uh, getting added here also so you can see the file here on the left side so this one click on that and go to this option save a copy in your drive make a copy in your drive if you click on it it's going to make a copy for you did you all able to open it if you have any issues you can put it in the chat till here you are done opening the link and making a copy of it okay you want me to repeat the process okay so riyas like i have sent the link in the chat click on it you will see google collab like you will see this opening on your laptop after that go to this file on the left side this one here you're able to say it i'm not getting this page did you log into your gmail account you have to log into your gmail account 
no issues if you forgot to provide your id yesterday you can still be able to open this make sure you have uh, logged into your gmail account you need gmail account access to open this everybody else are uh, anybody else who have the same issue not able to open it put a thumbs up if you all had opened it okay uh, i am getting uh, unable to copy notebook error after login okay so you see the file here right just go and click on save a copy and drive yeah, you must uh, log in to your gmail id yeah if you click on it if you click on it it will create a copy for you now the same thing uh... yeah because so if, if I click on save a copy in uh, drive, so I'm getting that error, uh, unable to copy notebook. There was an error loading this notebook. Ensure the file is accessible and try okay. again. Okay. Did you log into your Gmail ID or did you log in through your uh, office laptop? Oh, okay, got it. Got it. So there is a drive uh, storage issue. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So still here, I think everybody have done it. Making a copy. I, I have I have the same issue as the, the okay. last participant. Okay. Did you log in through your office laptop? Make sure you have logged into your Gmail account. Yes, I did. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, I just joined now, so I don't know uh, what is going on. Could you brief me? Okay. Just okay. Okay. No issues. Like I have sent a link here, Survi. It's a Google Colab link. I'm going to send it again. Okay. Just open it on your end. Make sure you are you are uh, logged into your Gmail ID. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So once you open it, go to the file and click on save a copy in drive. Okay, ma'am. Done. And A, I don't know who A is, but saying that notebook loading error. Make sure you log into your Gmail ID. Many of you have opened like uh, done it till here right should we press, shall we proceed like if it's not loading after the class let's connect and see okay try to follow the class see what's happening so it's very simple you just need the gmail id and the internet connection once you click on the link you'll be able to open this but you will be not be able to edit this because in the share i didn't give you access for editing because multiple people can work on this collab so if you start editing in the same collab link all the codes get get updated in this link also so i want you to make a copy and work on it so that you have your personalized copy so if i would have given the editor option here you people would have uh, can edit this copy also so okay so this is a google collab you can see like you know it's connected to online servers just a second i'll share only the collab okay so you see plus code and plus text on the left side, right? How many of you are coding for the first time? Put it in the chat box as one. Coding for the first time. 
আপনি পাচ্ছেন ফার্স্ট টাইম নো ইস ওয়ান সেকেন্ড ওকে সো লেটস গো স্লো স্টিল হিয়ার ইটস ক্লিয়ার রাইট সাচিন আর অভিষেক ওকে গ্রেট so for programming we need to work on the ide we are going to work on this google collab which is connected to the google computer on the other end so you don't have to worry about your systems ram and operating systems so here not only coding we can do the texting part also in google collab you see the plus code and plus text on the left side if you click on plus code you'll get a code cell and if you click on plus text you'll get a text cell where you can do the texting part you can write like second class so this is the code cell you see the box here right this is the code cell you can do a simple mathematics here like 8 plus 5 and you see the play button here you run it so you are going to run the code so you can see like it's going to connect the online servers here on the right side only for the first time it's going to take a bit longer to connect to the online servers yeah you can click on this you can see like it's connected to python 3 google compute engine and you check for the ram and disk here okay so we are going to learn python here so python is a high level interpreted and interactive programming language and it is known for its readability and simplicity it's an excellent language for beginners and it has like wide range of applications you'll see how easy python is till here you all you are able to catch me if you have any questions you can put it in the chat Let's start with Python operators. So operators in Python are special symbols that perform operations on variables and values. So let's we are going to do some basic arithmetic operations on the Google Collab. So I have already put in the code cells here. The green text you see is nothing but the comments. You write a text here and add a hash symbol before it they become comments it's not code anymore it's a comment okay so i'm just giving a simple mathematics here 9 plus 8 and running it you can also do the same on your collab link you can also start typing and running it till here you are able to do it run the code on your lap uh, on your collab links So I've just put in like two numbers and given an operator like plus in between, and we got the addition, right? You can do the same like fraction, multiplication. For multiplication, we are going to give this operator and run it. And for division, we have the backslash. so you can see here like when we have multi uh, multiplied here it is like 56 but when we are doing the division here we got the decimal number 4.0 so in python same like in language when you are learn, learning a foreign language we have all different words right so python is the programming language like language we are using to communicate with the computer so we have few new terminology here like the numbers here which are not decimals we call them int you are anyways going to see it in the next coming activities 
but the numbers with decimal point we call them float so you can even check it we have something called functions everything you are going to see it in deep in the next coming activities don't worry we are i'm going to just show you there's a function called type when you type in it shows in right but when you do the division here it will show float so you're going to see it in the coming activities but whatever you're doing here is already coding 13 plus uh, 13 minus 7 whatever you have typed here is coding already in python so to get the same result in c++ or java you have to write five to six lines of code you can see the simplicity of python here and how easy it is for data science python is a good language because uh, you don't have to co concentrate a lot on syntax you can directly start working on learning the concepts of data science that's the reason like python becomes so famous and next we can see like you know we have modulus it returns the reminder of a division if i type like eight modulus of What do you think the output would be? Put it in the chat. 8 modulus of 2. What is the reminder of 8 modulus of 2? Correct. We ask 0. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Till here you are able to do it. Are you all doing, or, uh, doing it in your Google Collabs? Any questions till here? Any problems? Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay, great. You people are uh, following. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, can you explain yeah. modulus? Okay, modulus is nothing but the reminder. Eight divided by two. When you divide eight by two. Okay. Okay. Got it. So it's the reminder. So this is the modulus. You are going to get the zero. So when you do it like seven modulus of what would be the reminder now? One. Okay. Right. So modulus is the reminder. When you use this division operator, you are going to get the quotient. So we can even raise one number to the power of another. For that, we have to use two asterisks. What would be the output here when we raise eight power two? What would be the output? Correct, correct. So next we have floor division. So okay. It divides one number by another but rounds down to the nearest integer. What do you think would be the output when I do seven floor division of two? Three, okay. I'm expecting you all are doing on your collabs also. Correct. So till now we have seen like, you know, in the code cell, I'm typing something and on the left side, I'm running it. You can even press shift and enter. You're going to get the output, right? I'm going to write something here and run it. What do you expect when I run this? I just wrote earth there and if I run it, 
what do you think the output would be syntactic it correct but why correct because earth is a text so for python we have a different terminology here like the text is called as strings so any time you write text we have to include that in double quotations or single quotations if not it will throw error strings so text is called as strings here and we have to write it in double quotations or single quotations double quotation or single quotations so syntax is nothing but the rules we have like the preset rules we have to follow for the python programming language and the syntax of python programming language is little simpler compared to other programming languages so let's work with strings we are going to play around a bit with strings if i write earth plus mars I have given this plus operand. So when you write something like this, so this becomes the operands, and the plus symbol which is between them becomes the operator. So this is the operator. It's very slow. So, what is the output for this? Earth plus Mars. Okay, you want the collab link again? Earth Mars, correct. I'm going to share it again, but do make a copy of it. Click on File and save a copy in the drive. You will be able to make a copy. so next we can we'll do the repetition like what multiply by 3 what would be the output can i do this do you think there will be an error or what would be the output when i do a into c error okay we are expecting an error anybody else okay everybody are able to do the codes on your collabs right error okay i'm running it so it's earth three times it's not error here so let's mix the types like with multiplication the earth string is repeating three times so if you have a integer and a string and the operand here if you run it now this will be an error so what's happening here when you have a integer and integer and you have a plus operator in between python knows like you know it's an addition when you have two strings and you have this operator in between python knows it's a concatenation but when you have a string and a integer then it's going to throw an error how to make uh, how to correct this what do you think we can do so that you know the error gets resolved convert the type maybe correct so i can convert five to a string just by giving the quotations 
or there is one more way of converting integer to strings that is like you can give like str and you write something and then you can convert that so you got like 1310 since this is a string and this is also a string these are numbers in normal language in programming language when like in python when you have quotations it becomes string so when two strings are used plus operator in between it it gives you the concatenated answer like 1310 till here you all understood any questions am i going too slow for you or too fast okay perfect so no questions i'm assuming no questions because i don't see any questions in the chat so let's see variables and data types what is a variable so in normal language we can say like you know a variable is like a container where you can store a value inside it so it's like a box or a container where you can store any value inside it so when you store a value inside a variable you can reuse them later on so you can give any name to this variable how to create a variable let's see so if i write a equal to 5 and run it a variable is created so we have created a variable like in python's memory a variable is created where the name a is given to it and the value is 5 inside it so when you give this equal to sign here we are not actually uh, checking for the similarity here it that means like we have assigned a value which is on the right side a equal to 5 is like assignment operator here where 5 got assigned to this variable a so once we have created the variable let's see what is happening in the back end actually when you create a variable in python it's not giving the name a you are going to get some memory location number some random number like this but since it's very difficult to remember this numbers to make the job easy we are going to give some names to it usually we give the names according to the value inside it so that is easy for remembering for us to reuse it so the thing here is like so the same with the humans right if you don't have names and we have telephone numbers as our na uh, names like it becomes very difficult to remember everybody's names with telephone numbers like ali ask it right? so how to check the memory location there is a function like Sure. Type something like this. You're going to see the location ID here. Okay. I'm going to create one more variable. Five equal to sorry, b equal to ten. So I have given two variable names. So if I create one more variable, c equal to five. What do you think? python is going to create one more variable first we have created variable a get some number here like and next we have created a variable b which has 10 inside it when you create a variable with the same value again in python it's not going to create one more variable it's going to assign to the same memory location here so this is one of the pro of using python because it does a good memory management 
it doesn't waste the space again so you can check it like if i check for the id of c you'll get the same like a is it clear till now any questions which memory it gets to the python memory we talk so for creating a variable names we have some rules so it variables have to start with letters small letters a to z or capital letters or underscore so let's see that so you can create a variable with capital letter yeah it's working and you can create a variable with underscore underscore of a it's also working no special characters are allowed if i give a special character and try to create a variable name you can see that you know it's throwing error so no special characters are allowed as variable names can't contain spaces let's try for space and see a space b run it so you can see like you know it's invalid syntax can't be python keywords so what are keywords here so the names which are already given by python researchers to some of the functions or attributes so you can see like when you do the have it and keywords so you got the list of all the python keywords you don't have to by heart all the keywords here because when you type a keyword for example false here immediately you see like you know the color is changed in here and you run it it will throw error because there is a keyword already that the same with the human being right we are not giving the names like bench table which are already taken for the objects so the last practice it says is they are case sensitive so f is capital here let's change it to small letter and check it works because the false false with capital f is a keyword but with small f it, it can be used as a variable name so as a good practice name a variable in such a way that it reflects the nature of the value stored in it okay so we have tried creating different variables here and we have seen the rules which we have to follow for creating the variable names so till here it's clear any questions are you able to run it on your collab links also okay great what do you think it's hard to do programming or it's easy till here it's clear right okay next we'll see what are data types in python so we already seen like you know what are strings right the text which is enclosed or anything any value enclosed between quotation singular double quotations as a string so the numbers which have which are having digits after decimal points are the floating point number and the numbers without decimal points are the integers and the true and false values are the boolean 
but may, uh, you have to see this here like the t in true and f in false must be capital because python is case sensitive so let me just you're going to see print function soon but when i'm printing okay let me just do it in the next activity only so let's practice python variables by storing some information i want you to do this activity from your end also i'll give you two minutes try to do this activity then i'll do it it's asking you to create four different variables and store the name age gender and time right now in the variables so first you are going to store a string value in a variable you can give any variable name suited i'll give you one minute you can try i hope you are practicing alongside Okay. So when I am creating the name, should I give the quotations or not? I'm going to create a first variable name and next age time right now. So time is a keyword, so I'm going to A different variable name. It's a four. Next, the gender. You can give true for female, false for male. You can see, like, you know, when you are giving true or false, make sure the first letter is capital. And I'm going to run this. If we run the code cell, we won't be getting any output. But the values are got assigned. We have created four variables. Everybody are able to do it on your end? Okay. Any questions? What is the data type of 8.48? Okay, great. What is the data type of 8.48? Load. Get it. So, I didn't got any output, but the values got assigned, right? To print this, we are going to use the print function. So print is a function. So what exactly is a function? So functions are nothing but to do, to do a specific task or to create something. Or like you can even say like, you know, a function is like a machine or a device where you can give some input and it will give some output to do a task. So you have this print function here. The task of this print function is to print something. Whatever you write inside it, it will print. So in functions, we have two types of functions, like predefined function. Or you can call it like a ready-made function. Second, we have user-defined functions. 
so predefined functions or ready made functions as the name suggests are the functions which are readily available uh, with python already all the functions are designed we just have to use them in user defined functions are the ones which we create for our own task which are not readily available you can take the example of uh, ready made functions are like ready made foods available outside where you can directly purchase and eat in user defined functions is like home cooked food where you have to organize all the ingredients you have to take care of the recipe to make it so the print function here what do you think print function is a ready made function or user defined function It's a ready-made function, right? Correct. So when you use the print function, you have to write whatever you want to print here. So you are going to see the output here, all over. So if I want to print all the above created variables, so what should I write here? Print. The variable names. Should I write the variable names inside the quotations or without the quotations? What do you think? In build function, correct. Without, correct. Because the variables we have created are name, age. Now I must go down and gender. The same thing which I, uh, if I give it with the quotations, what happens? What would be the output? You are going to get it as a text, the strings. So when you print the variable names, no need of quotations. And in this activity, you can see like, you know, for the strings, we have given quotations. For integer and float, no need of quotations. And for true and false, T and F to be capital and without quotations. If you give quotations, true and false also becomes the strings. So till here, any question? You, uh, all of you are able to do this. Okay, great. So again, like you know, you have quotations, double quotations, and single quotations. You can see the statement here, Nagpur's orange. What do you think? What what would be the output if I run this? There's a quotation in between. Will Will this throw error or we or we can expect the output here? As it is, we'll print okay. So let's run it and see. Correct. So the quotations here, the first and the end are taken care and it we got the output like Nakpo's orange, but see the other case. When you have single quotations here and double quotations for orange, if you run this, what would be the output? The same thing here, if I print, we like this. What will be the output? Correct, correct. Someone says the same. Mm -hmm. Run it on your end also and check. If I run this, you can see the error here. Because the quotations, it's taking still here, like single quotations for not to. And again, for this orange, things like you know the quotations are missing but here when we have given double quotations the double quotations are taken care of and you got this snap orange here 
so you have to be careful with these quotations but if you want uh, quotations to be ignored you can give the backslash when you give this the quotation uh, it won't take it as the string quotations it gets ignored so whenever you have to give some quotations in the string you can use of the use of this backslash and uh, give that so that you don't get errors the last activity for today we'll see the input function so what do you think input is a ready made function or predefined function okay error kid so we'll see the input function to take input from a user in python you can use another function called input function so let's see like i'm asking i'm creating a variable name and using the input function so usually functions will be followed with this parenthesis get it get it then you run this you'll see like you know it's asking for the input from the user end so i can give like and press enter you can see like you know the output has started you can even give some message to display like name underscore one equal to input please enter your name and then run this you can see like you know it's the text got displayed on the left side and you can enter the name and press enter you can see in the rajo got printed right and let's do this with one more example input please enter your name and the next is h again input please enter your h and next i'm printing my name is and the variable name since name underscore one is the variable i'm not going to give quotations for it my age is i'm separating it with a comma also each one if i run this please enter your name please enter your age you can see the statement my name is raju my age is 18 there is one more thing we have to note about input here what do you think is the data type of 18 here what is the type of 18 here what what do you think would be the output get it int no uh, what get it the entire skeleton is a string right see when i run this you can see like you know it's a string you have to note like you know inside the input function you can also write a message uh, an input function takes input in the form of string you give number you give boolean but the output would be a string so if you want to do any operation on this you have to convert that to an integer and then do it if not it will throw an error So you have to keep this in mind. Like input function takes input in the form of a string. You don't have to by heart all of these things. By practice, you will get, uh, you will remember all these things. So just do the practice. Don't try to by heart all these things. Don't stress over that. So many things, so many new 
function names so just do the practice don't buy hard anything so with this we'll stop today's session tomorrow we are going to see more functions more uh, we'll also see the arithmetic we already seen the arithmetic operations today right tomorrow we'll see the logical operators assignment operators and functions and if time permits we'll see conditional statements also tomorrow so i hope you have enjoyed the session any questions everything you have learned today are you able to do it on your end also yes it was easy or difficult to understand okay okay right okay easy okay great so python is very beginner friendly language it doesn't have much syntax also it's very easy to learn so the fundamentals we have to be very strong so you have i'm going very slow so that you know you get the fundamentals correct yeah so do make a copy of the collab because if i delete the actual collab from my drive it gets deleted from your end also so make sure you make a copy and practice on it okay we will try to share this file in whatsapp group also but you have made a copy of it right it will get stored into your gmail id already whatever gmail id you have logged in it will get saved into your gmail id so and the link i have shared right now if you open it all the codes will be updated so you can all again make a copy of the class, uh, edited copy which i have done so you just have to open the same link i have shared and make one more copy so that all the codes i have done in the class will get updated in it okay okay no issues we'll share the link again so once you join the course like everything you will have a whatsapp group so we can this was share the link again okay now share the link again you can make a copy so if you don't have any questions you can leave the session we will see you tomorrow at the same time um uh, so i class want to ask yeah. something so like a uh, one to one I, i have to ask yeah okay so if you don't have any questions you can leave for today have a great night ahead good night see you all tomorrow Okay, Sujay, Abdul, do you have any questions? If not, you can leave. We'll see you tomorrow.